assuming that heat capacity of water is constant and equal to 4,200 joules per kilograms per Kelvin, determine the size of the following heat exchangers. Okay, so two things for us in the beginning here is the size of the heat exchanger, what it's asking us for is what's the area of this heat exchanger, okay? We can then convert the surface area required into different shapes according to what we want, the type that we want. Um, but whenever they ask for the size, asking for the area. Now, the other thing is, assuming heat capacity of water is constant equal to 4,200, is this guy here C sub P, or is this the new one I just talked about, the big, the C min or C max? It's the CP, isn't it? Yep, C sub P, right? Just by looking at the units, right? You can be sure. Right? It's the same one you guys are used to. So that's the C sub P just there. Okay. Uh, a, cold water entering an exchanger at 0.5 kilograms per second and 40 Celsius being heated to 50 by hot water flowing counterly at 1 kilograms per second ent entering at 60 Celsius. Key word here is counterly, right? So that same thing is saying in counter flow right, as opposed to parallel flow. Assume the overall heat transfer coefficient is 500. Is this guy, is this 500, is this H or is it U? That's you. That's you. Good job. Okay, it's overall heat transfer coefficient, so that's why we can be sure it's you. Okay, I'm going to do this for every problem today for us to be extra sure of that. Okay, so what we're going to do whenever we get these problems, okay, all of these heat exchanger problems, all of them, I would like you guys to draw this little drawing that I drew here. Okay, I'd like to draw a little square. I don't know anything about this yet. A little square or a rectangle, and you're going to put cold and hot, and you're going to put the arrows whether they are counter or parallel, right? In this case, they are counter, so that's why they're going to like so, but they could be parallel, in which case they will be like so, right? Doing this, I can assure you your error rate is going to drop by more than 60%. Okay, our water is entering at 40 and leaving at 50. Our Hot water is entering at 60 and leaving at something that we don't know. So we don't know this value just yet. Okay. What we're being asked is what is the area? What is the area? We talked about how the amount of energy will be proportional to the overall heat transfer coefficient, the surface area, the delta T log mean, and a correction factor F. Note that nothing has been said about F, so we can assume it to be one, okay? And if we want to find the surface area, all we need to do is multiply, or actually get the heat being transferred and divide that by the overall heat transfer coefficient and the delta T log mean. We have this fellow already, so we need to determine Q and delta T log mean to be able to solve this question. To be able to determine delta T log mean, I need to find the delta T's. And then on the right side, that's quite easy because that will be 10, right? 60 minus 50, that's the difference there. That's 10 Celsius in difference. On this side, however, I can't do it just yet because I don't know what is the output temperature. So that's, a, what, that's what I need to do. What is the output temperature? Well, we knew from the start that Q was gonna go from the hot from the cold, that that never changes. We can be sure of that every single time. Never, never in doubt. And we know that all the energy the hot is given away is being absorbed by the cold, just like before, right? That, nothing changed in that regard. So what we can do is, let me zoom out a bit. What we can do is the Q of the hot has to be equal to the Q of the cold. And the Q of the hot and the cold we know, right? Because we know how much energy something needs to increase in temperature and how much energy something gives away to increase in temperature. So check out what we can do here. There's actually two different ways we can go about this. We can solve it straight off the bat for the output of the hot, or we can just solve this one first. Mass flow rate of cold, Cp of cold, delta C of cold, delta T of cold. Okay, what is the, what are the uh, mass flow rates? Let me go ahead and do, put this to the side just here, so you can put the mass flow rates there. What are the mass flow rates? The mass flow rate of the cold is 0.5, Kilograms per second. The mass flow rate of the hot is one 
kilograms per second. Know how I'm putting them on the same line that I put the re rectangle, okay? It's also part of the method. Cool. Um, so that means it's 0.5 over here times the uh, 4,200 times the difference from 50 to 40, which is 10. Yeah, so our cold water goes from 40 to 50, so the delta T there on the cold is 10. Okay. This turns out to be, it's half, it's gonna be 21,000 watts, which is 21 times 10 to the third. Yeah, so nothing new here, right? We all know this. But what we can also do is, like I said, we can we know all these things so we can make them equal. So that means that the mass flow rate of the hot times the CP of the hot times the delta T of the hot is also equal to the mass flow rate of the code, the CP of the code, and the delta T of the code. We can write these guys down. This is going to be one kilograms per second. This is a 42, the same thing as the cold one. This is entering at uh, 60 and leaving at a temperature that I don't know, hot output equals uh, 0.5, uh, 42, and the uh, 50 minus 40. Now, these are the same, we can go away. So we're gonna be left with half of 10, that's five, which is going to multiply, this is one, so it's not, not think it's gonna change, right? So this is just gonna be, T hot out equals 60 minus five equals 55 Celsius. So the output of the hot, we can take this guy down and we can put this guy as 55 Celsius. It's terrible, right, Pablo? Okay. So that means I have to have the right entity of 10. So what is my net my mean going to be? Well, if it was a simple mean, it will be uh, 12.5, right? But it's not, it's a natural log mean. So it's gonna be something similar to that, but not quite. So let's find out what is our natural log mean. Let me go ahead and put these guys down. Put these guys down here. And we can find what is our natural log mean. Delta T log mean 15 minus 10 divided by the natural log of 15 over 10. So close to 12.5, but no, it's not the same thing. Also, we're doing this and we get 17. Can't be right. You get nine, it cannot be right. You get seven, it cannot be right. It's a mean, right? Has to be between 10 and 15. No other option. But now, the, oh, and by the way, this is Celsius or Kelvin, right? Because after all, it's still a delta T. Yeah? Cool. Um, so check it out. Surface area will be 21 times 10 to the third watts divided by U, and this was 500, I think at 500. Delta T log mean, 12.33. We are not dumb, so we know units are important and we don't want to get confused, so let's put the units down. Watts or joules per second, eh, watts works. Watts on the top, then dividing, we have watts per meter squared, Kelvin. In the bottom, we have Kelvin or Celsius, so we choose Kelvin because we have Kelvin on the top. We'll be left with meter squared, which is a unit for area, so all good. We did a good job, 3.4 meters squared. So this heat exchanger needs 3.4 meters squared of area for us to be able to take the 40 degree water and take it to 50 and the 60 degree water is down to 55 under these conditions. Now what we're going to do is solve part B and in part B everything is the same, ex exactly the same except for this that will be in parallel. Okay so let's have a look at the question. Cold water entering at 0.5 and 40 being heated to 50 by hot water entering in parallel at one kilograms per second, entering at 60. So the overall heat transfer coefficient is 500. So everything is the same except it is parallel flow. So let's draw this. Firstly, 
method is exactly the same. We're going to draw a little rectangle like so. Do this. We're going to put cold. We're going to put hot. So hot and, and red. Okay, and we know hot enters at 60. We know cold enters at 40. No cold leaves at 50. Okay, we know cold has a 0.5 kilograms per second rate, and hot has one kilogram per second rate. Everything is the same except it's parallel. From what we learned in the in the lectures, what is the difference between the counter flow and a parallel flow? The let's do what is the difference between counter and parallel flow. The difference is that the delta t log mean on the counter is greater than the delta t log mean in the parallel. The mean between the delta t's ends up being greater on the counter than in the parallel. If the delta t is greater, that means that the, it's, it's, it's easier for energy to flow or more energy flows from one to the other. So it would mean that because of proportional, Q will go flow more than Q on the parallel. But since in this case, it's exactly the same Q, right? Because it's exactly the same input and output. That means that to compensate that, we're going to have a difference in area. The area would be that this area would have to be greater, right? The area on the parallel flow to exchange the same amount of heat has to be greater because it has a smaller delta T log mean. So when we solve this problem, we should expect to find an area that is greater than 3.4 meters squared, based on the theory. All right, let's see if that checks out. Nothing changed in regards to Q, right? Q is still going from hot to cold. That did not change whatsoever. The amount of energy has to be the same. So note that the equation ends up being the same, right? Mass of cold, Cp of cold, delta T of cold. This is all the same. So therefore the output of hot has to be the same, right? So from this guy, we still get that the hot output, it's still 55. That did not change. However, what does change now is that, what does change now is our delta t's, right? Because on this side here, we have 20, which is a big delta t in comparison to the others. But over here, we only have five. So our, net, our, our log mean now is gonna be somewhere between five and 20. We can do it again, actually we'll do it again. Yep. Our delta T log mean is 20 minus five divided by the natural log of 20 over five. And this turns out to be 20, where is it? Sorry, 10.82. Remember what it was for the previous one? It was 12.33. So note how nothing changed between the two except the natural log, delta T natural log mean. Okay, now remember what the equation was? Surface area was 21,000 watts divided by 500 of the, um, overall heat transfer coefficient, and then 10.8. 82 over here. And this turns out to be 3.88 meters squared. So indeed, right? Indeed, more than, more than, where is it? Ah, oh, there it is, 3.4, right? Indeed, 3.4 and 3.88. So under the same conditions, the parallel heat exchanger would have to be larger than the counter parallel counter heat exchanger any questions